Path of Night is an actual play Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the world of darkness. We're all friends, we're here to have fun, but our story can include graphic violence, drug use, sexual content, and other mature themes. Content warnings can be found in the show notes. We talk at our table about safety, comfort, and consent, both as players and storytellers. We know what to expect, we're all excited to be here, and we want you to feel the same. So listener discretion is advised. Now, let's walk the path of night. Last time on Path of Night, Reese called the Coterie and informed them of Britta's location in the Tremere Shantry. The Coterie argued about what to do, both about their missing Toreador and the werewolf in Johnny's truck. Meanwhile, Britta fought to survive Vito and an infected Perun. The group arrived at Yale and met up with Romeo. At the same time, Britta met up with Shrike. The two discovered captive Thinbloods and Seers, and Britta had a strange encounter with what might have been Neil. She freed a mysterious mortal named Eden and continued fleeing. The others faced down against familiar flesh monsters and sustained major injuries. Still, they went deeper into the Shantry. Johnny, Wynn, Miles, and Ira. The group of you head down dark tunnels and many of the paths seem to descend deeper and deeper into this hidden fortress that the Tremere have made. As you go, there are small halls that lead off into what seem to be office spaces, ritual rooms. Uh, Ira, you recognize that a few of them actually still have some of the spell components that are made readily available for acolytes and apprentices. But much of this space has been specifically cleared out it's like something started going wrong some a little while ago not like maybe you know a couple weeks a few nights and the tremere started to clear out got much of the way at much of it done but now this place is lost so they knew something was coming more than just like a night or two ago they they had at least a few days a week maybe to plan to like get the fuck out and then something like ramped up real hard Perhaps not something coming from without, yeah, but from within. Like it became clear to them that containment wasn't going to last, and the uh, the option to transport was not viable. And sending in resources when the city is already threatened by the Sabbat risks just wasting all of those resources. The thing that really kind of sticks with you about this, though, is that above is a place of higher learning where many, many young people will come and go. And when the holiday seasons come, they'll travel off to various parts of the country and beyond. And if these people end up infected, it could easily become a global disaster. But at least for now, the Tremere at least have a thing, a things to a point where if that front entrance to the Chantry can be restored, they have it contained within the Chantry as a whole. How long all of this is going to last? Very unclear. And as you move on, Wynne keeps falling behind. So much of her flesh has been worn to the point of almost inoperable that she can't quite keep up with the group. She is... The side of the left side of her head is kind of a lost cause at this point. It's just very bloody. There's like half of her white braid is stained red. So she's definitely focused elsewhere, but always forward. Occasionally she has not dropped her protean eyes. And so she but she is visibly blinking longer than she usually does. Like there is a struggle with the side of one of her hands because she still has her claws up. She can't spare the blood to let them drop. She is actively like grabbing onto her pants to help her move her wounded leg. Like the need to move is still present, but the ability to has been greatly diminished. She has said nothing. She has not complained. Her goal is very clear that she is going to reach Britta. Miles takes a look around the group. 
All right, we need to change this up. Ira, Johnny, uh, more towards the front. Ira, so you can keep the lights going. You guys take the lead. We'll watch behind. And he grabs the functioning side, essentially. the one, Whatever. Your arms are fine, right? My arms part. are fine. All right. Just clawy. And then, like, props up and, like, let's keep moving. Is there some sort of place we can stop, Ira? Win, weirdly, doesn't protest the help. And that might be a little more distressing than if she had fought it. We're going to need a few minutes to recover. I was uh, thinking the same. And he sort of looks back over his shoulder. The electricity is starting to die down a little bit as they've been moving. Little sparks of it fly off and hit the wall and then just kind of every time the light is diminished a little bit more. There should be a place uh, where we can rest. This is a lot. And I know we know we're pressed for time, but... I'm a goddamn liability right now. If I can get just even a little back, I can I can say in the game, I can... I can use my gun this time. Assuming it's not too infected. That, my gun? No. The storerooms. Wynne kind of blinks like maybe she's just a little low and maybe she's just a little hurt that like she couldn't follow even such a simple conversation. And she just kind of nods. There should be hopefully untainted blood supplies. Someplace where we can stop even for a couple minutes. That or some sort of supply or armory might be helpful in seeing what they, seeing what we might have available to us. We should have expected these spiders again, but I had not expected it to be this bad. Why would we expect them to be anywhere but Hell House? All right. Well, this is all a good plan, but we're going to need to get there first. Ira, you point us in the right direction. I'll lead the way. Ira nods. Uh, not completely familiar with the layout of the Chantry, but, you know, no, mostly knows Tremere. Yeah, he knows what to look for. Yeah. Is there, um, like, Tremere markings and stuff like that that are essentially signposts? Something like that. <laughs> uh, as the group of you go... Uh, I see it clearly in the angles of this hallway. <laughs> you come to uh, another office space entrance that says, you know, do not enter. Uh, reflexively, the group of you kind of murmur to yourselves kind of like irritated that you guys can't go that way and start just moving right on Ira this does not have an effect on you and you as an employee uh, <laughs> realize that this is a direction that you the group of you can go in and you notice that there is this little blinking light that's on the electronic lock for the it's a very, very reinforced door and door frame. And the fungus flesh, the spongy matter that has been uh, growing throughout this space doesn't quite reach the wards uh, that protect this entrance. And you kind of get the impression that this might like this might be the sort of place that you're actually looking for. Ira stops outside the door. Uh, ho hold up. Everybody this way. We can't go that way. I've got a hall pass. And nerd. Miles realizes upon having the audacity to say that he can't do something <laughs> that something is amiss and realizes that the sign shouldn't be taken to heart as much as it has been and that there's some sort of magic afoot. Ira not so door. Do I have the like access codes to get in here or Well, you can short the lock. I, I don't necessarily know if I want to like it's up to you. Uh, <laughs> uh, I hate that. Someone can try to pick it. You, I mean, you have you have options. So I was looking at the lock. I want to get in here, and I could fry the lock, but then the doors open. The wards would hold, but I'd rather have a closed door. Uh, I don't suppose anybody picked up a key card or passcode. Well, the only body we've seen so far has been Ash, so no, not on that part. Okay. Um, there is potentially another way to do this. Could you give me a couple of minutes? Have, we, have you tried the door? I was quiet for a few moments and then reaches out to just try the door. <laughs> the door opens. <laughs> Fucking God. <laughs> Damn it. Win. Uh, this I, seems to lift Win a lot. Ira, 
Iris stare as the door handle like opens and is unlocked. Iris stares at it for a second and just goes, "Good, the passcodes still work." And <laughs> very clearly a lie. And jo- opens the Johnny, door. Johnny smirks at him and pats him on the shoulder as he kind of goes by. That's why I'm the seneschal. <laughs> is Iris still made of electricity? It's probably gone out by this point. Okay. He, um, Johnny will actually take this opportunity, though, to just sweep inside and make sure that there's nothing. When Johnny sweeps inside, this space is actually like two floors, but is only accessible from this floor. And there are very tall bookshelves. They've been cleared out. There are boxes everywhere. There's a table, a set of them, like a row of tables that are meant for, to kind of like sit down and review books pulled from the library. And on it, in one instance, there is a collection of weapons and bulletproof vests that were essentially scrounged by the acolytes back when this place was being more defended in its emergency. There's a lot in the way of stacks and stacks of like manila folders with information within and racing through this information, pausing only when he realizes that he is not alone, is Reese. And Reese looks up towards you, both annoyed that you have disturbed him in the midst of his research and relieved that he's not alone in a place like this. Johnny looks down at the grumbling chainsaw in his hands, looks up at Reese, kind of licks his fang for a second. Funny what it is you in a place like this, Primogen. Seneschal. He says, eyes locked with yours. Glad you're still alive. Likewise. Johnny turns off the chainsaw, heads over to the desk where he is, and, and pops it down. It's clear, guys. Looks like we found Reese. Ira continues to hold the door open and ushers for the prince to help the sheriff into the safe room. Miles does so. Gives a eyebrow raise at Reese. I see we've finally met up. Your grace. Hopefully this door locks. He looks at the door. Ah. Bah. The acolytes are all dead. Uh, he says, indicating he doesn't actually know how to operate that fucking thing. <laughs> Oh no. Uh, Similarity. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, common ground. <laughs> After Miles and Wynn are in and having this exchange, Ira closes the door behind them. Do I know how to cl- Yeah, it's like you flip a couple switches. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> he and locks like, the door. And like a powered magnet clunk <laughs> is like the little, you know, electric hum and buzz and then yeah. just clanks into place. It does lock, you grace. Great. This is big. Where are we? This is one of the libraries utilized by my clan. Or at least it was. Your friend, or whatever remains of her, is within the confines of this shantry, but not this room. You will need to venture elsewhere if you intend to find her. Great. This place is awesome. Well, we're going to take a breather here for a second, so I hope we don't interrupt your research too much there. I, um... If I am left to my work, I don't see where there would be an issue. Miles brings Wynn to, like, a chair. I assume there's some sort of chair or something like that. Seating. There's lots of chairs. There's actually, like, a very nice, very nice lounge space for, like, apprentices to kind of kick it while doing their research. Once Miles walks her over to the chair, she kind of, like, shakes her head. Like, if I sit, I don't know if I'm getting back up. We'll find some supplies, but take a seat for now. Can you... I need I need a favor. What's up? It won't be weird for me, but my phone is in my back pocket. Could you get it out and see if it can send some messages? Miles reaches for whatever pocket she's indicating. You, just, you check, and yeah. uh, your cell phone expertise tells you that there's no way that you're going to get reception down here. Uh, yeah, there's, um, there's not going to be any reception down here. Damn it. Do you want to compose the text and... I could get it to wherever at some point. Yeah, I want to I want to send a couple. Sure. Hands over his phone. I I can't type not with these. She wiggles her claws. She's oh. like I can't text with these. You haven't learned that yet? 
No, I can. I'm just I'm wearing serrated steel on my fingertips <laughs> that extend about a foot, Miles. It's not real easy to text with that. I know. I've seen some some uh, professional ladies do it, but um, <laughs> it's very uh, it's very intricate. It's a skill set. Look, whores get paid. I'm a slut. I can't afford those nails most of the time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> What text do you want me to type up? <laughs> Johnny visibly blinked. <laughs> Just... The first one, um, there's there's a listing for cab guy. All right. Just text. If you can see Joey, take care of him. I don't know if I'll make it back. Okay. Are we... Are we doing the last will of testaments here? Kind of. Okay, well. it It's not a goodbye. It's a just in case. Got it. Peace of mind. Yeah. No reason these will ever need to be sent. Send them anyway. Um, The other one to um, Coffee Guy. Do you not put real people's names on your phone? That doesn't seem like a great plan if I'm ever caught or captured. I mean, they'll still be able to figure it out the numbers there. Yeah, but... Uh, you can pay people to get that. The I'm records are extensive. Look, I don't know how it all works, but I'm making it as hard as I can make okay, it. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Coffee guy it is. Just say, um, I tried to find you. I'll keep trying. I don't know if you'll see me, though. All right. Is Miles actually doing as she's requesting, or is he just saying he will? No, I'm doing it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You don't have to put it back in my pocket if you don't want to. You can just hold on to it. It might be safer with me for now. <laughs> just generally, I feel like that's... Everything except me is probably safer with you. Because if I'm with you, I'm getting in the way. I don't think that's true at all. You just got... You intercepted many of those bugs there, and we did not know the extent of their... Should have guessed, though. I need to get better about not just letting things hit me. I need to... If we get out of this, if I get out of this, I need to... Maybe some celerities in order. We'll see what we can do. Take a minute. We'll see what we can have. I'm sure Reese has some things around here we can use. Johnny's kind of poking through some of the gear that's been laid out, the vests and the weapons. Looks like you got more than just books down here. Any chance you might actually have some fresh blood? Is that what it is that you've come looking for? Yes. Come this way. He gets up. Again, looking looking like he'd rather just be doing whatever it is that he's been doing down here. Ira and interjects real fast as he's walking for us, if you like, Regent. Yes, Apprentice, uh, in the back area of the library, you're going to find containers, uh, old principal focus beads. The incantation for them is unfortunately lost. However, there is still a set of canopic jars. Use the canopic jars for your, for our friends, and put it to good use. He nods and gives uh, a Tremere appropriate little bow to the regent. Of course, regent, I'm very happy to help. Splendid apprentice. Ira hasn't known Johnny for very long, but I think he will have recognized the fact that when people are short with Johnny, he tends to be short back with them. And you notice that Johnny kind of, his jaw locks up around Reese, and he gives him a little bit more deference than Johnny would normally give to any other vampire. Yeah. An interesting quirk of his personality for the time being. Yeah. <laughs> Ira nods and leads Johnny uh, back towards, like, the back supply area. This should be plenty of blood back here he pulls the uh he pulls his own pack of morley's back out and in the absence of a lot of the books i don't see a problem with this either johnny kind of nods pulls out his own cigarette and ira leads him back to where lex presumably there's just plenty of blood when you get back there uh you find that there are indeed a great deal of principal focus beads but more importantly, more useful to the actual group of you are what looks to be these kind of clay cylinder containers, like these jars, uh, with wax seals on them. Uh, you recognize them as sanguinous files. 
they are organized, and there is somewhere in the area of 200 of them neatly stacked and organized. The regent gave us permission to open the jars for what we need, so feel free to fill yourself up. Johnny kind of looks and, like, is shocked at this giant store of blood. Um, he blinks a little bit. We'll crack one open and uh, drink the contents. The blood feel the blood tastes fresh. The container itself is kind of like maybe a little older, especially in the past like indeterminate amount of time has developed a little dust over it. But when you open the seal, it is as though that blood had just been spilt from its vessel. How much blood do I get from drinking one of these? One per. How big are these containers? Like a 20-ounce bottle of soda. Okay. He looks around for like a box. <laughs> there are boxes. Um, he's going to start uh, putting uh, bottles into this uh, into a box so that he can bring them over to the lounge area where Wynn and Miles are relaxing. Can I stack, let's say, three dozen of these in a, in a box? Done. Okay. Johnny comes walking over with a box filled with little blood vessels and sets them down next to the two of you guys. Wynne has kind of refused to fully sit. She has her her damaged leg kind of like the knee is resting on the seat of the chair, so it's the weight is off of it, and she's just kind of standing on one leg and holding on to the back of the chair. Wynne, you, uh, you can drop those claws. I can promise you you're not getting in any more fights in the condition you're in. I need you to, to worry about getting yourself all, all tanked up with this blood. Is there enough that I can heal some of this? I promise you there is. That sounds very certain. Okay. Ira comes out of the back pushing a little, like, one of those, like, plastic carts from, uh, like, that you would have at school or at the library. This is made of wood, probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, with some stacked on it, and looks very at home pushing a book cart around, and looks over at the group of you as Johnny sits the box down and goes, uh, gestures towards Reese, and goes, thanks to the generosity of the region we should not have any problems with uh, blood for the moment so feel free to partake salute so, uh if you guys don't mind you'll just let me try these out first before you yeah you know particularity and taste and all that you have a refined palate i get it lex we get the, the tremere get very exacting about this is there like a list of traits or whatever of who this blood came from yeah, or a labeling order. system and there is a labeling system a, a blood dewey decimal system mm -hmm. yeah but i imagine it's like it's not going to be pertinent to like musicians yeah, yeah. Or, i don't know if that's accurate considering <laughs> yeah. who the regent was so well, miles why don't you give me an intelligence roll and see if any of those names are musicians you recognize from the area just a straight intelligence roll yeah are they in latin <laughs> What's that? Uh, what am I looking for? Difficulty eight. Oh come on! <laughs> What'd you get? Seven seven nine. <laughs> if it was six up, it would have been three successes. Well, with one success, you recognize a name, <laughs> and there are four traits of blood belonging to that person. Oh hello! I recognize the names, but it's written in papyrus. He's <laughs> <laughs> a member of uh, one of the local bands. The uh, the Down River Blood Spillers, and they used to uh, play the underground metal scene. I wonder where these guys had gone to. Giving the group a little bit of space, uh, Ira will sort of stand back and sit at another one of like the little lounge chairs. But it's such an angle where he could watch them and Reese kind of at the same time. Opens his coat before he drinks any of the blood and takes out like a little, what's like a pomade jar kind of looking thing takes this grotesque looking paste out of it and starts pushing the part of his face that was like pulled down into jowls, kind of back up into pa place with the paste and just rubbing it onto his skin, which looks like it's kind of becoming malleable as he's doing it. The hell is that? It's a um, mixture of my blood and some dirt from the city I was born in. It takes a bit. You can only do it so much, but it will hopefully take care of this, whatever the fuck they did. You got more of that? It has to be your blood and your homeland. He kind of looks over at Wynn and kind of sags a little bit. I'll be fine, Johnny. I'll get there. Sorry. Also, are you fuckers smoking in a library? There's no books. <laughs> I would not do it if there were books. I would. I know you would. 
recalling the last time in a abandoned chantry of forbidden knowledge. He's like, smoke's gotta go. <laughs> that was a condemned library. Re- Reese visibly winces and frowns. I will entertain our guests. I am required elsewhere. Of course, Regent. He heads for uh, one of the lounge seats that's kind of in its own little corner. And he sits down, sits back into a seat, closes his eyes, and goes perfectly still. Is he... Is this Ira like, might be aware. Is he astral projecting? Yeah, yes. I was going to say, yeah. does this look like when Nail would step out of his body? It does. As soon as the Regent is like very clearly out of it, Ira stands up from his seat, takes like a little handkerchief out of his coat and starts wiping the paste back off his face and his face is fixed and then goes over and starts without touching anything because I don't want any of the papers to not to be out of place starts looking very deliberately and calculatingly at the things that Reese was reading. Wynn is obviously interested but she is focusing on just slamming these blood vials and she like <laughs> <laughs> We're just going shop for shop with blood vials and yep. cigarette <laughs> smoking cigarettes and and slamming blood vials. Yep, just party on Wayne until dawn. Talking game mechanics. Yep, you know, we're not in a parking lot. It's fine. <laughs> when will will sink sixteen of these blood vials? Done. Which will allow her to fill up and heal one of the damage. You will need to spend a point of willpower as well. Yep. To um, force the healing. Reading extremely quickly what I can see here. What's Reese doing? So, what's Reese looking at? Uh, I will spend to read at double speed here. As you start going through, firstly, it's in Latin. Do you have? I do. Excellent. Gross. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you dick. <laughs> Shut up and drink is, your special blood. <laughs> uh, reviewing events that happened over 90 years ago involving a Tremere by the name of Zachariah Slane. And what you come to find out, just by going through what information he has on Zachariah Slain, is that Zachariah is a potent Tremere that resided and may continue to reside in the area. He was originally from Boston, and when the city fell to some conflict involving witches, a woman named Madeline Coventry, and the Sabbat, he was forced out of the city and ended up under the care of John Reese, who was uh, running things out this way and in Hartford. And this guy, Mr. Slane, had been wanting to get back into Boston to continue some sort of research that he had been involved in. What you find out uh, as you kind of go through is that Zachariah Slane had dealings and interactions with a group known as the Xantosa. And the Xantosa used Zachariah's help smuggling uh, victims, uh, like live, like people uh, that were being used to feed something that was growing for the purposes of an experiment being conducted in New Haven. The address lines up with that of Hell House. And... You kind of find out that Vito Zantosa was working with a Tremere named Zachariah Slane to get the location set up. And it was meant to be a kind of site for used for the purposes of studying the ancient vampire Vito the Zantosa and something that is referred to as the eldest. And it, it's it's got like a lot of notes involving uh, conflicts in Transylvania, uh, events referred to as the War of Princes, and just various major conflicts that happened among the ki- within the kindred world, bleeding all the way back to like the 14th century. What he is specifically looking for are the apprentice reports from Zacharias Slane when he was under Reese, because during that time, uh, it would appear that he had developed a pair of rituals, one that allowed for the summoning of a spirit, and then another one that allowed for a binding slash psychic connection to a spirit. It was regarded as extraordinarily dangerous stuff, the kind of thing that draws the attention of raging lupines, but Zachariah did it. And you find out that it was actually Zachariah's experimentation at a chantry in Salem Mm. that led to disaster with a coven of witches and a demon that ended up going loose 
because of the interference of some sort of hidden society of mages. Now, when you look through it, there's actually kind of a name you would recognize because of some past work. In this case, the name that comes to mind is the Order of the Worm. And Reese seems to be in the midst of considering legit breaking some rules because he blames all of this chaos that's going on on Zachariah Slane and it was Reese was tribunaled for Zachariah's actions and it's actually the information on his tribunal that's largely okay. redacted he was seen as a hero yeah. and yep. uh, a good guy so like he's going through in some instances like centuries of information and you're kind of starting to think that this Tremere that was reported as dead might not be and Reese might be considering going after him to take him out like personally I don't touch any of these because I don't want the regent to know that I'm touching them or looking at them yeah you can definitely tell there's much there's there's a lot more there's stuff under there but just looking what at what I you can get, see and you start uh, piecing all of that Ira together. pulls a little camera out of a pocket and the three of you very clearly see him take a couple of photos of the things Reese was looking at and then surreptitiously put it back in his pocket. And as soon as he does that, goes back to the chair that he was sitting at next to the cart covered in like blood vials and then just sits down, not really paying attention and starts like casting and healing and trying to like heal some of the damage that Johnny did with the chainsaw. So Lex, I'll spend a will and five blood to do that. Sounds good. Um, And like casting magic and... Doing basically like combat prep is is what is very clear. So not too long after Reese sits down and astral projects, uh, I am unsure on the frenzy check part of this because that very much reminds me that I owe him for something <laughs> for Marcus and the astral projection and all that. Well, you have diabolized in the past, so I'm going to ask for a self control check difficulty eight to not try to devour him. What was that difficulty? Eight. That is no successes. <laughs> okay. What's going on in the room right now? The room was actually pretty quiet, but not a comfortable quiet. Seconds, minutes, who knows pass as each of you one at a time noticed that Miles is staring at Reese with eyes that narrow more and more. And just as the tension consumed the room, it was broken by a pitter-patter at the door. As the two are running, Britta uses an ability. She uses her ability to double talk to everyone except for Eden. That awful mass of growing flesh and rot. It sounds as if she's begging Perun to break out of it. And it's sincere, because she really is asking someone to break free and save themselves. What she's really communicating to Eden is, if they catch me, if they kill me, just make it out safe, okay? Don't touch anything that looks orange or infected, just go. She pauses a moment, tired, weak, and exhausted. And nods quickly, too choked up to really say words in response or say anything that would come across as coherent. But you can feel what little bit of strength she has left in her. She grips your hand just a little tighter. The mass of flesh, the entity that pursues you, groans with amusement. Lips, teeth, a little mound, mouths start to manifest in the flesh. Come, 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 come. They all say, beckoning you back towards the meat. If anything could strengthen Britta's speed, that would be on the list. Being inspired to run just a little faster, the two of you head towards a set of hallways. And this, like, almost like a fork in your path. One of them has one of the major vaults passageway likely to like another uh like quadrant of this this underground fortress the other says employees only and you find yourself working on the huge vault door 
and it is sealed. It's tight. It doesn't look like it's been disturbed in a little while. And this mound of flesh draws more near. The girl who is accompanying you, Eden, she seems to be drawn the other way. And with her little fist, she starts pounding on this reinforced door that you're not allowed in. Britta, confused, gets up but goes over to investigate. She doesn't really have the time to both check on her and try to break the door open, so she doesn't want to let this girl get in. Checking the door. It says employees only, so you can't do anything here. Eden, we have to escape. Uh, we, can't, we can't go that the, through the vault door. We're at a dead end. She kind of pauses at this point, having hurt her hands, banging on the door. The mass of flesh kind of slows down, as if intent on savoring the moment. The mouths give way to hands that are outstretched reaching for you and ready to embrace you and pull you into the others. The reinforced door opens up, and the second the door opens, you hear the grumbling of a chainsaw. And standing in the doorframe is Johnny Saxon, smoking a cigarette and ready ready to use a chainsaw. The girl screams (laughs) in terror of this muscular, (laughs) broad-shouldered, Killing machine wielding a chainsaw. Britta still is enwreathed in her majesty. And using that, she'll say to Eden, Please go in, I know, I know. What does Johnny see beyond them? What Johnny sees, one, is what looks like a very young, malnourished teenage girl with very dark hair, very light skin, and... Obviously, this look of panic as she beholds him in all his glory. Um, (laughs) And with her (laughs) is Britta, who is dressed in way more leather than the last time you saw her. (laughs) And for whatever reason, looks like she came here to be a femme fatale killer. And then something else catches your attention. It's got this thick layer of mucus that covers it, insulating it from the risk of any, like, fire or weapons. And it is this amalgamation of the people that were here. And it shudders and pulses and twitches and manifests rows of teeth and fingers bristling and kind of feeling along the walls. And it seems to recognize you rapidly constructing eyes to behold you with. And it looks at you like a child looks to their sire. Um, Johnny, uh, tosses the chainsaw to the ground, uh, which the second he takes his hand off the safety, it just kind of like, it sputters to, to, to just turn, like, you know, it stalls out and sputters to, to off grabs the two of them and pulls them inside and slams the door behind. <laughs> Ira, lock it, lock it, lock it. I'm uh, assuming Ira actually helped Johnny open it. Yeah. And then Johnny just went out first because I'm the one that's yeah. actually like, Ira, combat ready. Ira looks just eyes wide and then slams, helps Johnny like slam the door and immediately like hits the, uh, hits the levers to, to like electronically lock the door again. <laughs> Thump! Something bangs against the door from the other side. And puts a, like, visible dent in the reinforced door. Johnny! Britta looks for more locks on the door, regardless of the door being locked. She is unable to because Johnny grabs her up in a bear hug (laughs) and starts squeezing her. Britta, once she can mentally process that that's Johnny melts into it and hugs really hard back. It takes a couple seconds of total panic, but once she's there, she she's not letting go. Glad to see you're all right, kid. I'm glad you're okay, too. I'm sorry I didn't want you guys to have to come here, right? Well, next time you decide to go crash in a shantry, just give us a heads up first. Ira frowns, but is not dumb enough to say anything and just kind of steps back and lets them have this, like, 
Oh, he has no idea. Father-daughter moment? Whatever this is. When Ira steps back, that draws Britta's attention to the fact that there's an unknown factor in the room. You have some kind of identification. You've, you have a pin that you're There's trimmer? a pin on his tie right now, uh, now that his tie is back in place, that is very clearly the symbol of Tr- Clan Tremere. Her eyes do skim over to the movement, and with a quick once-over, she starts and stops the sentence when she sees the pin. I didn't want to come here. I... Oh, don't don't worry about it. This is, uh... I... Don't worry. I'll give you two a moment. Ira goes back into, like, the library proper. Johnny points a thumb over at the reclining Reese in the, uh, chair. The, uh, regent, apparently, gave the prince and his coterie permission to be here, so everything's on the up and up. Britta's eyebrows furrow for a moment as you say prince and coterie. She lays her head against your chest, kind of looking sideways at who else is present. When a combination of having her hearing damaged by the flesh crafting beasties didn't particularly notice that there was a banging at the door. She was focused on Miles looking at Reese like, like chaps would look at raw meat. There is more happening behind the glasses than the calm composure surface is letting on. Miles is essentially stock still, like unnaturally still. And one of his hands has uh, gripped his, um, was, is just gripping the hill in a just white knuckle way. As he looks at the not moving, also unnaturally still Reese. And just that kind of flaring energy that was around him the last time when you when marcus was dead is is very similar here when calmly steps between miles's eyeline toward reese blood spattered it seems most of the healing that she was able to do on herself was directed towards her hip so she's able to walk without dragging her leg and she kind of approaches miles and she drops her head without dropping her gaze i'm right with you He doesn't deserve mercy, but we don't have time right now. And Britta's here, and she doesn't need to see us do this. I would rather be with her if this is going to be our last stand. Teeth almost cracking before he says anything. For now. Oh no, I'm definitely going to draw a dick on his forehead later, but we, there'll be time. Justice will have its day. We don't need to do it all now. Stepping over from, uh, like, away from Britta and Johnny giving them their space, Ira clocks the weird energy over by Reese. Looks like he considers something for a second, like a, like he's having some sort of internal debate, and then pushes his glasses up, sort of readjusts them, and looks over between the two, uh, between Wynn and Miles, and goes, if you're looking for justice for the region... I can guarantee you it's coming. There is something a lot bigger going on here than even just this chantry or whatever beef you have with the region. All it's going to take is a few more pieces, and there will be justice for whatever is going on here. And if you help me, if you're patient, because these things can take time, There'll be justice, and instead of making an enemy, Clan Tremere would thank you for it. Strange words. Johnny, you feel Britta's fingers curl into your leather jacket tighter, and she puts her face into you instead of looking to the side. At the encroachment of politics into this already complicated and terrifying scene. Johnny kind of pats you on the back and looks up to everyone else. All right, guys. How about enough talk of the jihad for right now? We gotta worry about getting the hell out of this fucking horror show. Wynne kind of takes a minute to make sure that the minute she's gone, Miles isn't going to charge. She's looking to see if his shoulders have relaxed, if there's some movement. Eden seems to have sought out kind of a corner between bookshelves, and while everyone's talking and figuring things out, she wraps her arms around her knees uh, while kind of sitting there, rests her head, and softly cries. When she's crying, there's actual tears coming out, right? There are tears. Not blood. 
to tears. seeing that, Johnny kind of looks down at Britta. Britta, who the hell's the kid you found? Before she can answer, Wynn finally can't wait any longer to make sure that everyone is frenzy proof. And she comes over and it's not weakness, but she just feels too relieved to be strong about it. Just grabs Britta and holds on to her. Britta allows herself to be transferred into the next hug <laughs> and squeezes Win back just as hard as she squeezed Johnny. Except more careful. Win. I'm she's... fine. Let me have it. You can feel the hesitation then you say that and you feel it resume back to a usual grip rather than Britta kind of angling her arms so where there might be damage to your clothes or to your armor. Wynne finally lets the claws go and just like strokes Britta's hair and just holds her. Hey, Wynne. Hey, Britta. It's hard to explain, but there's a couple things. I mean, her name is Eden and... Whose name is Eden? She She's over there. Wynne will kind of look over and... The instinct is clear to go to her, but she knows what she looks like. And I don't know if I saw the way that he, Vito, that he was pulling people through into him. And I don't think I can leave here without making sure he's done. Reese asked me to reconsider that, but I... Why? He must have given you more to go on than just please do this for you to actually consider it. He said that Vito was important to research that could save people. That with everything coming, that... Was that Vito outside? I... There's th things, people, I... Things... Everything in here that's organic that looks like that. The orange and the slime and when people stop moving right and her eyes land on Reese for a second the way that he's not moving. He's doing like what Neil used to do. Well, he went and sat down first rather than just dropping in the middle of the street. I will use some heightened vision to double check that. You can roll to or perceive. That is six successes. Not usually how that goes for aura perception for Britta. With six successes, you can see that he has no current emotional state. His mind is, in this case, literally elsewhere. Mm. Britta looks intensely over to Reese, but seems to nod in confirmation that he's doing as Neil did. And she continues to explain. When will gradually let her go when Britta is ready to let go? Unless Miles is moving for the hug, she's just staying. Okay. <laughs> uh, Johnny slowly and delicately moves towards Eden and takes his leather jacket off. He kind of frowns a little bit, noticing that over the course of tonight, there are slices from werewolf claws, a whole <laughs> spattering of acid, and maybe some uh, some slashes from the uh, the New Jersey goons from even earlier tonight. <laughs> Uh, a couple of little scorch marks from away. <laughs> this this jacket is almost at wit's end, which it's been through a lot with Johnny, and he does not like the fact that it might have to be retired soon. He kind of looks down at, at Eden, who's shivering, and kind of like very gently offers her the jacket. Hey, uh, mind looking after this for me for a while? And he kind of gently places it around on her shoulders so that she's got a little bit of protection, literally and metaphorically. She looks up at him, afraid, perhaps not not of him, at least not anymore, but clearly understanding just how grave the situation is. With the little hand, she reaches up and accepts the offer. And how old does this girl seem? She's got to be in her mid-teens. She's not, not very old. Not an adult. No, not an adult. And... Almost like if she's attempting to, like, distract herself. Her fingers kind of brush over the texture of the torn parts of leather. And she uses it like uh, like a little blanket, almost, like putting it over her knees. And with a very soft voice, she says, uh, Thank you. Thank you. You need anything else? You let me know, all right? Lex. This library was designed for acolytes and apprentices and stuff, right? That is Which correct. Which human beings would be in here sometimes. Yes. Is there like a fridge or something that would have food in it? Uh, when you take a look around, there is a fridge. It is mostly stocked with um, 
alcohol and simple refreshments, but there's like cheese. Some like Lunchables in there kind of. Yeah, yeah. there's there's like minor snacks, uh, small things meant to kind of like boost sugar. While Johnny's over there taking care of her. Ira, very clearly like there's a vibe in here. He's trying not to intrude and he's keeping half an eye on Miles and the regent, but will grab some crackers, cheese, whatever food, and just doesn't want to intrude on whatever that vibe is, so just kind of like hands it off to Johnny who has developed some sort of rapport. Well, if you start getting near... He starts walking over towards Eden. Yeah, absolutely. Then Britta tries to slip out of Wynne's grip and seems intent to place herself between Ira and the girl. Wynne does not stop Britta, but kind of holds onto her hand so Britta can lead her over. Quick question. Is Majesty still up? Yep. Because that doesn't have an effect on me, but it does affect the rest of you. (laughs) (laughs) I ain't turning that off, man. <laughs> Ira does stop. All right. And holds his left hand out with like a bunch of, you know, a little tray with some food. Girl's alive and looks hungry. You're as welcome to bring it to her as me. Wynn reaches out, both for the sake of expediency, but also showing through action to Britta that he's okay. There is mistrust. Wide in Britta's eyes. She has some reason to believe that Ira would cause harm to this girl. At least she thinks she does. But she lets this happen. She doesn't try to stop you. And just seems very alert about the situation. Britta, this is Ira. He is working with Mr. Giovanni. And Mr. Giovanni has tasked him with working with us. Back when Ira said something... To Miles, Miles would have taken a few, nodded reluctantly, basically, and then moved off so that the situation has diffused a bit. A bit, yeah. Okay. And then continues to watch as the other things play out and kind of taking some time to gain complete control. Ira, this is the first sign that you're seeing Britta. Yes. Britta looks to be about maybe 18 to 19 in her mortal life. She has... Very large, light blue eyes. They lean gray sometimes. And her hair is a light to medium brown. She does look comfortable in the strange outfit that she has. The body armor, the leather, but it seems harsher than maybe her usual vibe. And she, especially with Majesty, I'm uncertain. Sometimes Majesty doesn't work if you're Miles. What's When you've got presence up, does it... Can you tell when it's affecting somebody or, like, not affecting somebody based on their behavior? Yeah, I mean, people react no. when presence is up, so it's pretty easy to tell that it's coming. Ira is not reacting. All right, but Britta is still ridiculously gorgeous. We got this doe-eyed effect, and despite the panic and the lack of trust for you, you see a slight dip of the eyes towards your Tremere pen. She does finally give a squeeze one more to Wynne's hand. Let go and look over to where Miles is, intent on hugging him, but only if he seems ready. He will nod his head at her. Then he gets attacked with a hug. <laughs> Wynne kind of smiles as Miles, Miles is glomped. Yeah, he's not given. Once he, once he gives the nod and seems all right, he's wrapped up in the hug just as everyone else. Well, this is one hell of a way to come into here. Yeah. But that thing, I think that was Vito, but I don't know if he just has control over it. When I first saw him, he was separate. He was a a person. But every time that I've encountered someone else in here and they've been infected, they, they speak very flatly or they say what Vito would say and they move jerkily like they don't fully understand control of their own limbs. And they start seeming more and more under his control. I mean, what? Wait, there's other people in here? Like, that are being subsumed by him? Yeah. Yeah, there were a whole room of people that the Tremere had stolen and put into a cell. And they were planning on taking Neil, too. His name was on the list, but it was... Wynne kind of looks up when she mentions the whole room of people. Seemed to absorb a lot of thin bloods and sears right out of that cell, like like they'd been pulled through the little slot into the mass 
Wynne is listening, but she is effectively between a very hungry girl and her food. So she crouches down. She's trying to not show the mangled side of her face to Eden because she she's a lot to take in in general. But she kind of crouches down and offers the snacks to eat. Was there a bottle of water with it at all? Yeah. And she offers she offers to unscrew the lid for Eden. Do you want me to open that? She gives like a little nod. But once that food's in arm's reach, she is like reaching at it, taking it, and just voraciously eating and maybe a little too fast. But Wynne. she's gobbling down as much as she can get. Wynn takes a calculated risk and kind of puts her hand over the food but doesn't touch it. And when she sees how fast she's eating, I know you're hungry. I know what it's like to be that hungry. You are going to barf if you keep eating that fast. With cheeks kind of like, <laughs> like wide and chipmunk like when yeah. she like don't tries to chew. Don't swallow all that at once. Make that at least two different swallows, what you've got in there, okay? There's a slow nod. Okay. Between bites, get some water. That's going to help fill you up better. I'm Wynn. Sorry, uh, Eden, that's... Jo <laughs> she says mouthful. Eden, yes, I, I speak mouthful. That's, yeah, Wynn, and that's Johnny, and My Miles here, and Ira. You said the people just squeezed through a hole in the door? Vito used vicissitude to just pull them through one of those little sight slots. And they got mixed into that thing that you saw, along with the the walls. I don't know if you guys saw the walls running through, but they're covered in the fungus, like like from the we weeping pear. Yeah. Now, guys, this this is reminding me of something that I saw a while ago. Um, Sheila, one of the one of the hunters. Um, I met her through people near my haven, the bar there, the Sherwood Cafe. She yeah. asked me to look into a, an ex-boyfriend of hers. Something happened to him down in New York that made him... I, nothing like I'd ever seen before. Uh, Did his, he walk like a zombie? It's hard to say exactly how he walked, but it wasn't natural. His flesh was spongy. It was... Spongy like disease or spongy like decay? I'm not sure how to answer that. Spongy it, like something of unnatural. Um... I hate to say it, but something almost like fungus. Was it... Was there anything slimy and orange? <sighs> there could have been. I. It's been a while. I don't remember too well. But it, they weren't... He was oozing something. There's been a lot of, like, pus, and it looks like the same mushrooms from around the Weeping Bear, and... And the thing in my fridge. And stuff like Hell House. It all smells the same. I know that for sure. And he'd been in New York, you said? Yeah, so he had been, apparently something down in the subway had bitten him. Great, so our totally normal house out here in New Haven has now reached far enough away that it is infecting people in New York? No, Vito said something about this just being a piece here in New Haven. Yeah. Maybe we're thinking about it the wrong way. Maybe this came from New York and is starting to look for new homes like Hell House. Great. That's what viruses do. They expand and spread. Unfortunately, I found an even better spot to propagate here in the Chantry. I don't know what the hell your clan has done to it that's caused it to grow like this, though. Ira has been listening quietly and nods and looks over at Britta and just goes, I'd like to know that, too. You didn't happen to see any files or anything on uh, any of this that could make some sense. Ira... Physically exudes narc energy. Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Britta hears him request files and express his interest in this dangerous Tremere situation. And yes, he does. she's already not letting go of the hug from Miles unless prompted to. Unless you've prompted her to move, she just fades closer into your shoulder. No, but. Iris sighs, looks like, makes the, you know, six inch glance from, from Britta up to Miles and says, Your Grace, I'm just trying. Vito was Reese's prep project. How'd he get his hands on him? We brought him here. You brought him? After the second time when we captured him. Captured him from the house. Once from the house, once he was out in the wild. And then 
Why bring him here? To secure an alliance. The regent had requested him. Previously. Iron nods, looks back and forth. I'd say it was less of a request and more of a demand, but yeah. I mean, he that's was, never really stopped us before. He was currently the seneschal. So there was... Seneschal asks you to do something, and it's honestly to the benefit of the domain to not have this fuck wandering around the streets. I tried to break through to one of the people that Vito got infected, and it seemed like maybe... Maybe he was still in there, but it's strong. Britta, I know. Wynne kind of, like, she stays crouched by Eden, monitoring how fast she's eating, making sure she is drinking water, but she's also kind of listening as best she can to this conversation. And she just kind of cracks her knuckles a little bit and looks to Britta. It's been a very (laughs) trying week and longer, maybe. So... How did you get here? Miles does pat you on the back and basically go to disengage at that point. Britta does let Miles free. Honestly, with a bit of a flicker of surprise that she got away with just hugging him that hard for that long. But she lets him go with dignity. Um, do, you, do you all know where Neil is? He went after you. Yeah, I know. Um, I thought he would be with you or I hoped he would be with you after. Unfortunately, I think he's been everywhere recently. That's... Yeah, you had that weird... I saw him embody Dashwood for a while. He seemed like he was telepathically connected to one of the thin bloods in that cell, and he talked to me there. Was it like, like, like he was in someone else's body, and he was so kind of hunching and stuttering. Um, while this conversation has been happening, Johnny has kind of angled over towards the door where there, where there was kind of like a... That, that was kind of partially knocked in by whatever was on the other side. And he kind of just listens a little bit to the door. Does it sound like there's still something out there moving around? Or does it sound like it's kind of moved on or maybe it's just biding his time? You don't hear anything on the other side. He frowns a little bit and kind of moves back towards where the group is. The little girl, Eden, looks up at Wynne, who, and kind of tilts her head to the side a little, catching a better look at just how hurt Wynne really is after Wynne kind of revealed how hard things have been. Wynne kind of, if she notices this, she just gives a smirk. Should have seen the other guy. She actually smiles a little at that. And puts her hand up on Wynne's hand. It's okay. And a third eye opens on her forehead that shines with a soft blue light. And over the course of a handful of moments, Wynne's wounded and manipulated flesh begins to rapidly repair itself. Ira, as soon as there's that light change, immediately is looking over there with a... With a a yet unseen intensity. Ira, you recognize this kind of thing as something that is said to be done by the Salubri. A long-destroyed bloodline of monsters who devoured souls and engaged in terrible infernalism up until the, you know, the Tremere nobly wiped them out. (laughs) That's what I heard. (laughs) (laughs) I think at the weird sudden change, I have gone back to being prepared to stab something because i'm unsure what is happening what does it feel like it feels actually rather reminiscent of britta's hug it is this supernaturally conjured sense of warmth and peace and humanity and it is all the things that are anathema to the curse of cain when when the third eye opens It looks like the instinct is to jump up and yell, oh, fuck. But something about the girl's hand on hers. It's sort of like when a caged animal realizes that the person is there to help. Wynne rests her hand on Eden's, and she doesn't completely relax, but she just kind of lets it happen. And the relief, she's not even going to try to hide the relief. Wynne's health levels are restored. Jesus. The dust in the air around Ira 
freezes as like he's not crackling with lightning or anything like that but very clearly there's like a static in the air around him as this is happening his coat starts to ruffle a little bit and there's like a cold breeze in the room and he looks at win and goes sheriff i would recommend stepping away from the girl johnny whose mouth is completely agape and the uh, his cigarette is has fallen out and is on the floor just kind of takes a few moments and blinks and goes the fuck was that win kind of looks she doesn't break eyes with eden she kind of tips her head toward ira duly noted the thing the eye that is um a thing traditionally associated with demonic soul eaters so maybe I'm not going to do violence right now, but maybe don't let it touch you. She. Her. If you prefer. You might not have noticed Britta readying the gun. She's so efficient about it. How many demons have you been around, Ira? A few. Yeah, this isn't that. Isn't it? No. What is it then? Something else. Studies disagree. Studies have been known to be wrong. That's not what her file said. You've seen her file? Yeah. I saw the file for the mortal girl that you had, that your clan had, trapped in a cell. And? It didn't say anything about demons. What did it say, then? Ira's not looking over at Britta. May not even recognize her. She probably has a gun trained on him right now, you said? The gun is ready. Yep. <laughs> is still not even really looking at Wynn. It's like very... His reaction to this girl seems deeply ingrained of like... Like, he does not appear to be, at least from his perspective, overreacting at all. But out of the side of his mouth, it just goes, not demons. What did it say? I would love more information. Why are you here? With them? The regent called me and asked me to escort them to the Chantry. To find you. He came from another source. Uh, Mr. Ambergino, who you met before. Ambergino Giovanni. He's right. Mr. Giovanni. Yeah. He's not here. I'm good. Yeah, I know. I just... You said that, but I sounds like he's here with Reese. He's a Tremere, but he's not, he's, he's subject to the pyramid. Britta decides to test Ira, and... With her new success in aura rating, she trains her eyes on him, and she says, What would it mean to you if her file said that she was the last daughter of Eve? Lex, does that mean anything to me? Roll me intelligence, occult difficulty 8. Ooh. <laughs> uh, sadly, my tens don't blow, so seven successes. With a mere seven successes, you manage to recall in some of your training... Occasionally, there are Tremere who come upon information that is disruptive to their worldview, and some Tremere lose it and have to be put down. And as part of your training to become one of the men who puts those Tremere down, you learned a little bit about Gehenna cults. And in multiple instances, there have been Gehenna cults that believed in the coming of a messiah some sort of individual that would be able to offer redemption in the final nights in some instances this messiah would bring about golconda in some instances they would be the path to breaking the curse of cain and others they are a symbol of gehenna and the rise of the ancients if it is believed that this person is somehow tied to that at least in some of the more recent conversations in occult circles, she might be part of a phenomenon that is called the dumb fear. Mortals born from thin-blooded vampires. A living, breathing human born from a vampire. Now, supposedly... Any instance of the last daughter of Eve is going to have some sort of crescent moon birthmark on them. That's kind of the big sign, the crescent moon. Ira, you're not a villain, are you? I don't think so. You don't get your spec. <laughs> 
to some of the Tremere out there, I'm sure that I am. <laughs> Four successes. Ira, what is your emotional state? And how does it change as you learn that some people apparently believe that this little girl is the last daughter of Eve? Before last daughter of Eve is mentioned, Ira looks ready to fight. Looks truly ready to throw down with a demon and maybe die because that shit is not okay. So like flickers of fear, not necessarily anger, but more like the fear of a seasoned soldier who's done this kind of thing and knows how to keep his emotions in check to do the job that has to get done for everyone's sake. The kind of person who will make hard decisions and terrible decisions that have to be made. And when she says Last Order of Eve, first there's confusion and then recognition and then his emotions get chaotic as beliefs that he dismissed for a long time crash up against a conversation. I mean, you don't know the full context, but basically it is it is the emotional turmoil of someone who believed something for a long time and in a very short span of time is having a lot of that stuff questioned and challenged. You don't know the context for this, but I mean, Councilman Merlindo yesterday was like, hey, so Gehenna's real. So that's basically his emotional state. The cold breeze continues to blow. You're looking at his aura. That appears to not be something he's doing deliberately, just some sort of weird emotional supernatural side effect to his existence as a kindred, maybe when he is in a heightened state. But that sort of like potential energy in the air that was gathering around him does dissipate. The dust starts to settle again. And almost by rote, like something he's read and memorized a million times, he just says, he looks from Britta and then back directly at the girl. When the snows consume the earth and the sun gutters like a candle in the wind, then and only then there will be born a woman, the last daughter of Eve. And in her, there will be decided the fate of all. And you will not know this woman except by the mark of the moon on her. And she will face treachery, hatred, and pain. But in her is the last hope. And he looks over. It would make me feel, uh, shit. I don't know if it would make me feel better or worse, but... And he's, like, clearly talking to Eden. You don't have a mark of the moon on you, do you? Britta surreptitiously closes one hand. Nervously, Eden wipes the crumbs and subtle chocolate smears from her mouth and stands up, finally putting the leather jacket on. She rolls up a sleeve and turns, revealing on her left palm, falling the, the lines that curve around the palm facing her thumb. You can see this eerily perfect birthmark that looks like a crescent moon. Jesus Christ. Wynne isn't prepared to stop protecting this girl, and she keeps her shoulder kind of in front of Eden in case someone decides to get silly. Her third eye closes. Very subtle. When it's closed, you can there's almost no indication of it whatsoever. I didn't mean to scare you. I'm sorry. Ira doesn't say anything. Just gives her a little nod. Like, he is still very not comfortable with this. And lets slip just a quiet, damn fear. She gives a slow nod. My god. Johnny kind of fixes her a hard look. How much do you know about what we are? There's like a slight shake of the head. I know... I know that you're vampires. Johnny kind of nods reassuringly. I've seen that you drink blood. And she kind of eyes one of the open cylinders that were filled with blood. She eyes it hungrily. Do you need blood? She gives a little nod. It's hard to heal. Wynne hands one over to her. Looking like she's 
she has the demeanor like she's handing her like a tall boy. <laughs> like I probably shouldn't be giving the child some alcohol, but <laughs> but she says she needs it, and she she looks like a straight shooter. She just did me a solid, so she Th- just kind of passes it to her. Thank you. Uh, she says, and now you can see these like kind of cute, like like not quite real ass vampire fangs in her mouth, but like. Baby fangs, little, yeah, little kitty like, cat. Well, yeah, like <laughs> like kitten fangs. You know, she accepts the drink and guzzles down the blood like again hungrily. Do you need more? Is there more for everyone? Short there answer: is. Yes. There is. Yes. Let's take a few minutes. Let's let them rest uh, up. Yeah, get up I, secure. I, I want more, please. How much more do you think you need? Like five, six, ten, twenty? Just she doesn't, let, she doesn't seem sure. I'll it, I'll bring some over. You just have a seat over there. If I could take like seven, that would be great. But I want to make sure everyone everyone needs to have as much blood as possible if they're going to be fighting in I here. I think Clan Tremere is opening their hospitality to their blood stores here. My understanding, the region has offered it. And we're not sticking around. The Chantry's gone anyway, so... Good. Then I'll, I'll just keep on bringing the drinks. You relax. Uh, Miles, you might want to think about granting her hospitality at this point. I don't know how the fuck that applies. Miles, you recognize the word dumb fear. And you think back to, and it's very... It's an uncomfortable feeling. It's like fragments of memories that you experienced while under the tutelage of your sire kind of coming back to you in ways. Times that you helped him with investigations and in this instance, hunts. As you may recall, your sire isn't just an Archon. He is a Josian, the leader of the Josian, specifically a task force that is designed to wipe out Gehenna cults where and when they rise. It is policy for them to take all Gehenna-oriented paraphernalia from the cults when they are found and dispatched, and on more than one occasion, that has included a child born of vampires, or more specifically, thinbloods. You know that your sire will take this girl and she will never be seen again. You know that if there are any signs of thin bloods in your city, it is going to be the start of trouble. Elders, old princes, there are all kinds of tales about the time of thin blood and the doom of kindred society that follows it. So it looks like Reese has been preemptively rounding them up and keeping them out of sight? Perhaps attempting to understand why thin bloods and dumb fear and all of these strange things that keep popping up all over the place are popping up all over the place and more specifically what comes next what is the point of elimination of the gehenna cults well the camarilla officially does not believe in gehenna right it is a thing that causes chaos it is ridiculous fables that lead to violence and in the case in one particular case an entire rebellion so those who have the will to face such um, heresy are tasked with finding and exterminating it. Your sire is their leader. I do not think it would be smart for her or for some of us to have her publicly given hospitality. Probably Hosp- not as she is. Hospitality is for kindred, so... Well, isn't she a vampire? No. Well, that's complicated. complicated. And it would draw a lot of attention. It would draw a lot of attention. And there are factions in the Camarilla who will come and take her away. And bad things might be happening to us. Ira nods, not quite understanding. He's not talking about the same factions as Miles, but nods in solidarity with Miles like, yes. All right. Well, she is in the city. Perhaps an acknowledgement on the down low and some kind of cover story, at least. Acknowledgements go in books. She's a ghoul. She's a living being. She has disciplines. 
who would be the wiser? We can possibly figure this out. For now, I think we're going to keep her safe, and we're going to try to get her out of here. And I believe our other problem is to stop Vito from continuing whatever he's doing. Reese starts to sit up in his seat. Path of Night is a Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the world of darkness. Britta Ashcroft, the Toreador, was played by Rebecca Segelfest. Johnny Saxon, the Bruja, was played by Garrett Gabby. Miles Savinport, the Venture, was played by Tim Davis. Neil Foster, the Malkavian, was played by Rob Meerhead. Wynn Cabot, the Gangrel, was played by Erica Webb. Your storyteller was Lex Lopez. Recording by Rebecca Segelfest. This episode edited by Rob Meerhead. The music used in this episode was composed for Path of Night by Brian Metolius. Find him online at brianmetolius.com. Path of Night uses the 20th anniversary edition of Vampire the Masquerade with a few limited house rules. Vampire the Masquerade and the World of Darkness are owned by Paradox Interactive. Make sure to subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. We can be found on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Path of Night. You can help support the show on coffee.com slash Path of Night. Find us on twitter.com slash Path of Night Pod, on facebook.com slash Path of Night Podcasts, or email us at Path of Night Podcasts at gmail.com. See you next time, Kindred. And you can see that your coterie has already like picked up. Man, this feels hard, familiar. Hard, hard, <laughs> hard. Oh, it's real I got, her yep. name is Eden. We named her. <laughs> yeah, this, <laughs> we can't kill her. She has a name. Let's put a 2.0 here, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Also, how many times are you guys going to be able to scoop up the puppy <laughs> and have it turn out to be some sort of like trained murder machine? Miles, I'm going to tell you well, right it now. Be like last time. No, it's going to be this every goddamn time. We will we, always scoop up the puppy and if it turns out to be a werewolf we'll deal with it later. We fed her and gave her blood. <laughs> Miles. <laughs> oh look she's wearing my jacket. Look at how cute she is. Yeah. Look at her eat. She's I got little pepperoni crumbs. <laughs> I gave her blood. She can eat drink. food and blood. Oh my god she's perfect. Wynn and I will take her for walks. We yep. promise. Yep. <laughs>